Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Hey, the top end of Stevenson! Like, so this week, Craig, I don't know, you might have got, but I got, there was a wee WhatsApp story in the, 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 the rounds in the group chats. It was Morelos had a wee accident in his motor vehicle, yep. crashed in Arfield's car. Mm-hmm. Yep, I, yep, I heard his um, Lamborghini was uh, used as a fucking weapon against other motors. Um, we've obviously heard the news and the first thing that we as Football Daft, the podcast, think about when we hear when somebody runs into a bit of bother with their vehicle and they are looking for some, some help, they are looking for like-for-like like vehicle replacement, then Alfredo Morelos should go to G4 Claims. Yes. <laughs> G4 claim sponsor the show, and we think they're brilliant. And uh, we really think that uh, Tavernier, who is apparently dealing with all the insurance and in and in at Murray Park, um, Tavernier would get one way we um, Nicole and all the team doing there absolutely no bother. And um, because if you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault, G4 claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with complete accident management support you require. So you can cut out the middle one, you can cut out James Tavernier, you go straight to G4 because they're going to recover the cost from the at fault party. They're going to sort you a like for like vehicle replacement and they'll organise for your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you back at Murray Park. So should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they're going to recover the pre-accident value for your car. <laughs> Write you a big fat check for it. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they will as they'll charge the at fault insurance direct. G4 claims they don't call call you, they don't buy data. And once I've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. So if you've been in a road traffic accident, or in our case, we know somebody that has this week, get on to G4 Claims on 01698 That's 01698 Get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims, not at fault not claims. Not at fault claims, made easy. easy. Let's welcome to Football Daft, a man who made his name in Italian football with spells at Costenza, Bologna and Perugia before arriving in Scottish football in 1997. With 33 goals to his name before Christmas and 23 in his first 10 games at Rangers, the man was a phenomenon. Please welcome to the show none other than Marco Negri. Welcome, Marco. Thank you for hosting me. It's a pleasure. How are you, big man? This is, no, listen, uh, Marco, we've been very excited about this. Very, very excited. We've been talking about it in the group chat. And it's good to actually see you here, man. It's brilliant. We, we actually played, we, we talk about a charity game that we played in two years ago, and, and you were there that day. Was he there that day, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, when you stop playing football, when you stop playing football, uh, uh, professional football, uh, is. It's uh, absolutely fantastic, you know, to come back uh, and give yeah. something back uh, to charity or to the fans, uh, to the supporters. Uh, so the problem is uh, that uh, your head uh, wanna play like uh, the brilliant days, but uh, the legs uh, are fucked. Uh, so <laughs> it's really, really hard uh, to compete, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course, man, and especially. I mean, you're talking about giving back to charity and stuff like that, especially now, like, with everything that's going on, like the global pandemic, how's things been with you back home in Italy and stuff? How's it been with the lockdown and stuff? Well, it's been very, very tough uh, because uh, everybody in Italy has been involved. Uh, also me, the wife of my brother, has been in uh, intensive care for 55 days. Uh, Oh. It's been a really, really tough time. Uh, now everything is fine. Uh, there, there are still some little problems, but uh, now um, she's outside the hospital, uh, so she can recover. But uh, affected uh, a lot uh, because uh, in a healthy way, but also for the economic, uh, for the way you are living. I've got a, 
a boy that is 15 uh, is uh, really, really tough uh, explaining to him uh, that life is not anymore like before. You yes. know, sometimes uh, he asked me to go in uh, some uh, pub uh, and uh, you have to explain to him uh, to be careful. And uh, it's not uh, nice because uh, if you think about when you were a teenager, you know, <laughs> it's really hard uh, to uh, go out and be and be, uh, you know, to social distancing and everything. But, uh, you know, now looks like uh, it's a little bit better, but the, num the numbers uh, after the summers are growing up. So we must, uh, you know, stay, stay safe, uh, stay alert about uh, the coronavirus and maybe a second wave. I, I know, I think we, we, we really need to take care, but I think... I think we're getting there slowly but surely. You said, uh, Marco, that you've got a 15-year-old boy. What have you told him about the Rangers? Uh, well, uh, second skin, uh, you know, because uh, uh, <laughs> Rangers uh, has been uh, the top uh, of my career. Uh, it's really a shame that uh, he, he was not born, so he couldn't see me playing at Ibrox. But... Uh, you know, I was back uh, in Glasgow sometimes, uh, and a few times he was back uh, with me, so he can feel it, you know, the passion around uh, the Ranger supporters, uh, the feeling and the proud to be a, a former Rangers player, and, uh, you know, he's got a fully of staff of Rangers at home. He's really, really jealous about uh, my old tops. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that uh, uh, special, uh, make me special in front of, of my boy. Yeah. Who, who does, is he, obviously, he's a Rangers fan as well, like you. No, Marco, like your boy will always look out for Rangers results. But what other team does he support? Oh, well, uh, he's not perfect, so he's going to, to be like a Juventus fan. <laughs> because oh, well. he, in Italy, you know, there are uh, a lot, a lot of uh, Juventus fans, but uh, otherwise uh, they got a lot, a lot of supporters that uh, hate the team, <laughs> you know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, right now in Italy, support uh, Juventus uh, also because Ronaldo is playing with uh, the club, so he's one of the best players in the world and, uh, you know... I, we, we have been at the Bologna Stadium last season to watch live Ronaldo and, you know, it's something special to have a big, big star like him in Serie A. But it was, it was like us back in the day having Marco Negri play for Rangers, do you know what I mean? That's what it was like. <laughs> you know, well, uh, you know, I, I've been a really, really lucky player because I don't consider myself a legend. Uh, but uh, I've been really, really lucky, and uh, because I played with a lot of re a lot of legends, uh, Scottish legends like Ali McCoy, Andy Gorham, uh, and uh, Ian Durant, uh, Gaza, Laudrup, uh, and also some uh, great, great Dutch players like Moles, De Boer, Newman, uh, Fernando. So I consider myself a really, really lucky player because uh, you know. Uh, when you play with uh, such uh, big, big names, uh, uh, you understand uh, how big is being your career. So, so thanks to all these players, I understand that uh, I, I reached a very, very high level in my career. Mm -hmm. So, Marco, how did your, your move to Rangers come about? In fact, actually, tell us a wee bit about your career in Italy before you moved to Rangers. And then tell us okay. how the, the yeah. Rangers... Okay, I, I made my youth development in Udinese, a Serie A club. Then, uh, you know, I started to go on loan around Italy. And uh, then uh, I'm very proud because uh, I gained uh, the way to play in Serie A and in Serie B because I gained on the pitch. I won, uh, you know, the championship on the pitch. So when I was a kid, I had a dream, of course, to score and play in Serie A. And uh, at uh, 25, uh, my first game in Serie A uh, with Perugia, we won. Uh, I scored the only goal, uh, the winning goal. So, you know, it's something that really 
uh, you know, is um, is a dream that uh, is came true. And then uh, you know, because uh, you are uh, you are always uh, uh, trying to compete to higher level. You know, uh, you want more. Uh, you want to compete with the best. And to me, playing the Champions League was really, really another level. So I had the chance to move abroad. abroad. Uh, we, I knew something about the Rangers because we played with Juventus in Champions League in the tournament. So we watched on TV the games. So. I knew everything about the Ibrox atmosphere, about, uh, you know, the Scottish football. So when I had the chance to sign with some other Italian guys like Amoruso, like Gattuso, like Forini, I had no doubt. And, uh, but uh, I really, really understood uh, how big was the move, how big was Rangers Club and how big was Ibrox and everything when uh, I just arrived uh, in Glasgow, you know, because uh, it was another level. Already in the Glasgow airport, everybody knew me, everybody was asking me an autograph or something like this, and uh, I hadn't signed it already. So I said, it's a good start, you know, but then... Uh, Really, when uh, I arrived uh, to Ibrox, uh, I was speaking to Walter Smith uh, and uh, looking around uh, the Ibrox trophy room uh, or the, the pitch, uh, I had in my mind, I want to play in this place because it uh, looks really, really amazing. And then, uh, you know, everything started in the right way, you know, scoring a lot of goals. I, I mean, yeah. Your record when you came to Rangers, like when you started the first half of the season, it was just, it was phenomenal. I don't think anybody had ever seen anything like that before, Marco. Was was there any secret to it? Was it, was it the way you, did you enjoy Glasgow that much? Did you just settle down right away? Did Walter Smith do anything in training with you? Was it any secret to it? Well, uh, two secrets, I think. One is self-confidence, because... I was scoring in Italy a lot of goals, so you know, Serie A at the time was the best, best league in the world with a lot of golden boots, a lot of Ballon d'Or playing in the Serie A. So the confidence to, uh, to, to be a good player, to, to have the chance to score in a pitch was very, very high. And then the second secret is that playing with Gaza and Laudrup, you know that if you are around the box, something really good can happen, you know, in every minute. So I was lucky to play with guys like Durant, Gaza and Laudrup that was perfect to assist a penalty box player like me. Uh, Marco, it's amazing because you, you were just firing in goals constantly. And I think one of the games that stands out for me is the, the game against Dundee United when you scored five goals. To, to me, that day, we were just everybody was just blown away. Talk about um, the memories you've got for that day, banging in five of five them. Wow, it's a really, really nice story because uh, we played before uh, in, against Gothenburg uh, in uh, Sweden for the Champions League. And uh, I had a really, really bad uh, game. Uh, so Archie Knox and Walter Smith, you know, was hungry about me and my game. Uh, so uh, I was trying for a revenge, uh, for a revenge on the pitch. <laughs> so after 15, uh, 20 minutes, uh, uh, my game was not so good. Uh, so Archie Knox was on the bench just uh, screaming at me, run, fucking Italian, run, run. <laughs> So I was really, really upset. Uh, then, uh, you know, something strange in uh, football uh, can happen in just uh, 10 minutes. I scored a uh, hat-trick in uh, 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, then it was my perfect game because I was uh, sure about my ability. I was sure about uh, my way to play around the penalty box. Uh, and uh, uh, I had the chance in that game to show you know, that if uh, I had uh, some good balls around the, bo the box, uh, I could uh, score. So it was really, really my perfect game. You always dream uh, to score a lot of goals, but believe me, five uh, was uh, out of my mind, you know. <laughs> and it was like uh, playing a seven-a-side game, you know, when uh, you got a ball and you <laughs> score. So, but uh, 
still a, a special game uh, to me. I think it was uh, the perfect game because uh, I was just uh, scoring a header, a nice volley, a lob goal, uh, first touch goal inside the box, outside the box. So, and then was also the perfect game because I think uh, that game uh, let me uh, open the eyes of all the supporters, uh, fans yeah. about uh, this new Italian player. Mm -hmm. Did any of the, the Scottish boys in the in the team at that point, did any of them in particular take you under their wing or anything, Marco, that helped you settle in a bit better and stuff? Well, everybody was absolutely fantastic to me because, uh, you know, there was, at the time, uh, there were um, a big, big uh, number of uh, Scottish players that won, uh, you know, the famous uh, nine in a row. Mm -hmm. And the secret about... Uh, uh, that team uh, was uh, the group, you know, the solid, solid group. When you got solid group with uh, character uh, different, uh, but uh, unity, like uh, Ali, like Ian, like Goram, uh, like Gaza, Laudrup, and Richard Goff, you know, it's easier for uh, uh, another player to come in, uh, understand uh, the laws of the dress room, uh, understand uh, how things are about in the dress room. So it was very, very easy to me. Uh, of course, uh, Gaza that uh, could speak Italian because you were, you were playing uh, in Lazio, you know, uh, you know, helped my relationship uh, with him. And uh, inside the pitch, but of course also outside the pitch. And when, uh, you know, you got the attention of some big character like Gaza, you know, make you feel uh, either special. <laughs> <laughs> Marco, what was, because obviously you joined that Rangers team and you said it was obviously the nine in a row team and they had, you know, a, a, a big reputation for having a good social life. Um, and days off, was that ever introduced to you? How was how was your social life playing for Rangers? How did that? How was your your typical week with the Rangers? Well, I remember my first week because we used to training just in the morning, you know. So after the training, uh, uh, the guys like uh, Harley, Andy, Ian, uh, uh, Gaza told me, "Hey, come on, Marco, join with us for a lunch." So I was thinking, uh, okay you know, for, uh, to introduce myself, maybe it's a good way. So we were uh, at lunch in the city center and we started with big beers, so, you know, big, big pints <laughs> everywhere, no? So we started just uh, to start drinking, 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 and it uh, was a little bit too much to me. So I asked to Gaza, hey Gaza, can we also hit something so we, we can uh, fool the stomach and maybe it's better to me? And Gaza was just laughing at me. No, no, Marco, don't eat anything. If you eat, you vomit at the end. So <laughs> I told her to myself, uh, maybe it's too much to me, you know. <laughs> we can introduce myself uh, a little bit slowly, you know, to this guy. But it was just a part of this... Uh, a magnificent and great, great group of players and lads. Remember that uh, you can't win uh, nine in a row or trophy if you haven't got uh, good characters in a team and good, good group. Uh, you can win maybe one trophy, but you don't win a uh, nine in a row, you know. So it's, uh, uh, that uh, kind of team was really, really special. Yeah. There was, uh, when we were at the the Legends game back in Ibrox a while ago, Archie Knox talked about the Scottish boys and stuff. He told us a story and he said, when you signed, uh, he had a word with you and told you to start maybe try to close down the fullbacks. Yeah. And then you says to him, Archie, have you, you watched me play football? And Archie said, yes, I watched you. And you said, well, you know I don't do that. Yes, and Archie right. says, is, is that right? I'll go and get Walter. So what was, did, what was it like being on the receiving end of stuff from Walter? Was it quite tough? No, you know, um, uh, this is absolutely the truth. The truth, because uh, after this game, uh, this Gothenburg game uh, against Champions League, uh, it happened uh, this kind of thing, because Archie Knox was mad, mad to me, really mad, uh, because, uh, you know, in Italy, <laughs> you, got, you got assistant coach, you know, 
but uh, yeah. they are, uh, you know, polite. Uh, you, you try, they try to explain uh, to you the tactics and everything. Archie Knox was just screaming, spitting <laughs> around, uh, farting, you know, was something, <laughs> was something special, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, he was uh, um, a football man, football wise, uh, really clever man. So I had just uh, to tell him the truth, you know, because I was a penalty box uh, player yeah. in Italy. You know, if you buy a player, it's fine that you adapt uh, the player to the way, to the new league, but you can't change completely a player. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I told yeah. him, okay, I, I can try to do some... Uh, uh, more run on the back to help uh, the midfielders. But if you want another another player or another way to play, just play with another player. And that uh, was in the middle of the park uh, against uh, in the game against uh, Dundee United because after 20 minutes he was screaming, "Fuck Italian, run, run, you need to run!" <laughs> so I was back to him, just tell him, "Hey." You can sub me, you know, put another player, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, yeah, but then, you know, in football, in football at the end, uh, something magic can happen. I scored uh, three, three goals in 15 minutes, uh, and uh, half time, uh, Archie Knox was around me. Well done, Marco, well done, Marco. <laughs> You're my perfect <laughs> player, but it's part of the game, you know. <laughs> Super man, that's brilliant. When, when did um, when you came to Rangers? What were you told about the old firm game? Ah uh, well, uh, uh, everybody can uh, can talk to you and uh, tell you something about uh, the old firm, uh, but uh, you must try to understand uh, the special feeling of the of the old firm. I remember uh, really the old firm uh, that was special because. Uh, at the time uh, before the game uh, was a really, really nice uh, atmosphere in the dressing room. You know, Ali was telling something nice uh, that I couldn't understand, or uh, everybody was laughing, uh, but uh, I couldn't understand. Uh, Ian Durant was around the dressing room just uh, doing some funny things. But before the old firm, uh, I understood uh, that it was a special game because it was a different atmosphere. Everybody was quiet. Uh, everybody was uh, really, really focused uh, 100% on the game uh, because uh, you know that uh, it's not a game, uh, but it's the game. It's a game mm. that you play not for the club, not for the three points. Uh, you play for the people. You know, you play for uh, a million, millions of fans, uh, and that game means. Uh, uh, not just a uh, uh, football wise, uh, but uh, means something more for a lot, a lot of people. So you understand that uh, 90 minutes can change and can affect your career <laughs> in a positive way, but also in a negative way. So you you don't want a mess, you know, in that uh, 90 minutes. What about like in the dressing room beforehand? You're talking about with the players. What about like, Walter Smith? What was he like before an old firm game? What was he? What was he like in the dressing room? Was he quite calm? Yeah, it was calm because uh, it was really, really confident because uh, at the time uh, the the team knew it uh, that uh, if Rangers uh, could play in the right way at 100 percent of the possibility, uh, Rangers could win. You know, so we were focused uh, really uh, on ourselves, uh, on uh, on uh, to put uh, on the pitch uh, all the effort uh, and uh, doing uh, on the pitch the right way. But uh, you know, Walter Smith was perfect because he was a really, really. I think that man-to-man -man management, uh, Walter Smith has been the best, best manager that uh, I had. Really perfect uh, with uh, Scottish player, uh, with uh, foreign players, uh, with uh, special player like Gaza, you know. So he had uh, the right talk, and the right words uh, for everybody, you know. He was like a psychologist, you know, in the dressing room. So mm. it was really, really perfect also before uh, this uh, very, very important game like uh, the old affair. 
So, Marco, we obviously need to touch on your injury. Now, obviously, there's been rumours circulating for years. There's always myths and you hear wee stories about what actually happened. But, Marco, what did actually happen with your injury? Well, it uh, happened uh, the most bizarre injury in uh, Scottish football, you know, because uh, I heard uh, some funny story. I heard uh, uh, other uh, not so funny story, but the truth is that uh, was a day off because Wednesday usually was a day off uh, for a Rangers club. But in Italy, we used to training every day, and uh, in the middle of the week, uh, we training uh, twice in the morning and the afternoon. So I decided to training also during the day off, and I was just training alone in a park. Uh, I was doing some gym, uh, but it was boring. So I decided to go to playing uh, squash at the Living Well uh, in the city center of Glasgow with uh, Sergio Porini because uh, really I was thinking that squash was uh, the perfect uh, training for a striker, you know, it was like uh, a penalty box area, a lot of re reflex, a lot of uh, short run. Uh, and I love playing tennis, so I... I said, okay, we can go there so we can have uh, some fun and have uh, some fit. And luckily, I chose the wrong guy because the ability with the hands of Porini has, uh, are worse than on the feet. So you can understand that uh, he's really, <laughs> he was really, really bad. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bizarre injury. But uh, it's something that uh, now, after more than 20 years, uh, I can speak with uh, a smile on my face. Uh, but believe me, it was really, really tough uh, thinking that uh, I was scoring 30 goals. Uh, I was on the top of the league uh, with uh, the Rangers. We were uh, winning the 10 in a row. I was uh, winning uh, the Golden Boots, uh, some national uh, team uh, cup uh, was uh, coming, so, and uh, you go to play with uh, squash, uh, and, uh, you know, the ball hit me straight uh, in my high, and uh, my retina was just uh, flattering, and I couldn't see very well. The funny story is uh, that uh, after my injury, we were looking for a hospital, you know, so we took a taxi and I told the guy, okay, uh, first hospital, closest hospital to the, to the living well. So uh, the taxi stopped it. I was entered to, the, to this hospital, but it was a maternity, you know? It was uh, when the woman gave the birth, the Rotterdam <laughs> hospital. So the lady on the old told me, hey, we can help you, you know, we can help you because I was there with the eyes on my eye and uh, she couldn't understand and uh, she told me, hey, this is the wrong, the wrong place for you. So then uh, we reached uh, another, uh, another hospital, but uh, the bad news was that uh, my retina was affected. Uh, I had uh, uh, blood, uh, in my ears, uh, so the problem was very, very big. And then, uh, you know, problem started because I was uh, two months and a half uh, without uh, the chance uh, to training because the pressure on my eyes was very, very high. I couldn't fly home because uh, the pressure of the cabin of the plane uh, was dangerous. It was a tough time, you know, at the time. And then, uh, if you are a footballer, you are expecting an injury like a ACL, like a, I don't know, the back, the shoulder. But believe me, you know, a, a ball in a high in a, your first squash game. Oh, it's your first? Yeah, yeah. Your first squash game? First and last. Yeah, was a yeah, was a both. It was the first and the last. <laughs> I played two games. <laughs> One. No, the, yeah. The bad was uh, that, uh, you know, in the glass uh, of the court uh, should, uh, should have been uh, a paper that uh, you have to wear uh, glasses uh, to protect your eyes, you know, was the first thing. But, you know, it's tough uh, to think about it, but uh, that's life, you know. Some positive okay. life uh, can happen uh, during uh, your time and some really bad, but you have uh, to handle both. Do you, when you look back on it, Marco, do you think if that injury didn't happen, you would have been on to win 10 in a row? 
Yeah. Yeah, of course. And if my, that if, fucking squash ball. It, it, <laughs> is, it is my biggest, biggest regret, really, because uh, I, I know, I knew how important was the ten in a row. You know, I remember every game I was playing. You know, uh, thousands and thousands of fans uh, singing ten in a row, one more to go, ten in a row. It was really, really something that uh, you can feel it. You know, you know when uh, I was playing. And was so important. And I think, you know, because we were uh, on the top of the league, uh, I was scoring all, almost every game, uh, you know. So we were starting the game 1-0 <laughs> every I, week, I, you know. I. And uh, we had a great, great side with Gaza and Laudrup, uh, all the, the whole team. Uh, and uh, I really think uh, my injury... The departure of Gaza to Middlesbrough in March, uh, and uh, Walter Smith uh, telling the the paper that uh, he was leaving at the end of the season was something that uh, ruined maybe that season. You know, the atmosphere uh, was not uh, right. I don't know how to to explain because I really think uh, we lost. Uh, that title, uh, but uh, I can feel it. We were uh, the strongest side. Uh, you understand what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard feeling, you know, right. to to think about it right now. You know, it's interesting because Walter Smith was on Rangers TV last week, and he was talking about how he got sacked in the October of that year, which was something that I don't think. Well, I certainly didn't know about it. Did you know, Stephen, as well that 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 was a deal? Apparently, he said it before, but he was told in the October. He said it on Rangers TV last week. He said in, in the October he was told, look, we're going to be looking for another manager I know, at the end I know, of the season. I didn't know. That was the first time I'd seen that as well. I didn't, I didn't know that either. Aye, aye. So you're right, Marco. There was, there, there was like, obviously, you're, you're, you must have had a hard time dealing with the, with the squash injury, but I think there was, there was more than just the one reason. That wasn't just the sole reason, I definitely don't think. No, um, I think it was, it was a domino effect. It was like, yeah, yeah. you're injury, Marco, and then, mm -hmm. like you're saying, Gaza going to Middlesbrough in March. Yeah. Walter yeah. Smith saying it was like the whole dynamic of the team just yeah. flipped on the side, but, like but, came but, upside down. Yeah, them. absolutely. But think about it uh, that uh, we lost uh, the Liga, I think, about one point uh, or two yeah. points uh, that season. Yeah. I don't think so. We were very, very close. And I think uh, the main reason, to be fair, uh, was Gaza, the Gaza departure, because Gaza was uh, the sparkle. You understand? Uh, it was mm -hmm. something that uh, could win. Uh, the game alone, and we needed uh, at the end of the season, of that season, something that could just go on the pitch and uh, be a genius like he was and just winning the game, you know. And it was the main reason, I think, was Gaza. But uh, like you said, and I agree, was a domino effect, you know, a lot of uh, uh, not bad decision, decision, but uh, bad, bad. Uh, Timing, bad timing. It was a bad mm -hmm. timing. That's it. But uh, uh, is still my the biggest regrets of my career, really, not to win at any level. What about uh, the change in management? Obviously, with Walter Smith going and then Dick Advocate coming in, did you have any any conversations with Dick Advocate? How did you find him? Well, it was tough, you know, it was really, really tough. Uh, like I said before, uh, Walter Smith, uh, to me, was uh, the best manager, man-to-man -man management. Uh, Dick Advocat was really, really good on the picture because he was explaining uh, football-wise uh, a good way to build uh, a game. And uh, he was tough, but uh, after my injury, I made a lot of mistakes, uh, and uh, so, you know, the, the relationship with the new coach was not growing uh, in the right way. But uh, I made a lot of mistakes at the time. So I take the blame about, uh, you know, don't come back in the right way to the team. Mm. Right. I, I think, um, so like you, you're, saying, you, you're saying that you made a lot of bad decisions. When did you actually... Did it take you a good couple of years to realise, was it after Rangers you, 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 you realised you made these mistakes? 
Yes, because... Or uh, did you know you were doing it at the time and you just, you know, you couldn't control yourself? No, no, exactly. I was a very instinctive player on the pitch and also outside the pitch. I was very young. Uh, in uh, some way, I was uh, arrogant because uh, a striker must be arrogant, you know, self-confident always. Uh, so at the time, uh, I was thinking just about uh, myself uh, and my reasons. And uh, sometimes you have to listen also the other and understand when uh, you are wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we are humans. Uh, everybody's made mistakes. Uh, I paid uh, a lot of that mistakes because, like I said before, uh, Rangers was, was the top of my career. And I just burned uh, the chance uh, to play a lot of uh, season with uh, the Rangers top. Uh, so I paid. I paid on my scheme, uh, my mistakes. And uh, but you know, then uh, you you grow up. Uh, you got some uh, grey beard and grey hair. <laughs> you understand. Uh, you know that. Uh, you know, in life, uh, sometimes it's better listen the other and uh, put. Uh, Put a little bit in the, in aside uh, your your reason, but uh, it's too late now. But uh, it's good to admit when uh, you make mistake. Mm -hmm. Who, did, was it your decision to leave then, Marco? Or was it was it the club's decision? No, well, no. But uh, you know, when um, I was uh, in the in the right place, uh, in the best club uh, I could dream in. And uh, you must accept uh, that during your career uh, can be some high and some low. And you must accept uh, the low. You know, you, you must be patient and wait for your time again. At the time, I wasn't patient. You know, mm -hmm. I was uh, just wanted to play, just wanted uh, to have the reason in some, uh, in some point. And, uh, you know, when you put... Uh, uh, you know, when you think that life is black or white, you know, you put also the other one in a better situation, you know, and uh, I, at the time, my life was uh, white or black, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, so I decided uh, to move. Uh, then uh, I had uh, some other injury and uh, I had some other problems. Uh, then uh, when I wanted to uh, really come back to Rangers uh, and uh, show to myself that I was wrong and show also the people that I had made uh, the mistake, uh, I couldn't because I wasn't fit anymore, uh, you know, because a lot of uh, really strange and uh, really tough injury uh, heated me and so you know it's, it was just about timing you know and uh, that's another big regret of my career so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I so Marco hey I'm don't just, cry don't, no, cry. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't cry please <laughs> well, that's why I'm saying well do you know what because I, I, I'm, I'm sitting there and you, you do make me quite emotional because I day I day see somebody that realizes they made a mistake and obviously it must play in your mind now, even you have these, even though you have these amazing memories about, for playing for Rangers, but I'm sitting here, I'm looking at you and I'm going, I bet you can make a fucking great pasta. Oh yeah, of <laughs> course. You know, I'm telling, I'm telling you these uh, funny things. So, uh, before a game uh, in Italy, you used to, to eat uh, some pasta and then uh, some cake uh, or some uh, prosciutto or some ha uh, ham uh, like, like this. But I couldn't find, uh, especially outside the Ibrox, uh, cooking pasta. So mm. I tell uh, was, uh, um, you, know, on my plate was coming some pasta that I couldn't eat uh, really. So I was in the kitchen away, just telling the people, but why you can't cook a uh, right pasta? And because you must uh, let boil the water, and when the water is boiling, you put the pasta inside for 10 minutes. It's very easy. Some salt, uh, and that's fine. No, I've always heard that it should be like seawater. The, 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 the water should be very salty, like seawater. Yeah, no, you, you let boil uh, the water. When, uh, then you put uh, a little bit of salt, uh, you know, right. like pizza, you know. Ah, you know the score. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you put the pasta. It's very simple. But, but when I was in the kitchen, the guy was cooking, showed me that he put uh, the pasta in the cold water 
and just uh, let everything uh, just uh, and I say no come on nobody you are crab do this to an Italian guy no please no <laughs> That's a funny thing. No, I'm saying no wonder you were you were you were crab at sometimes. See what and also I want to ask you as well, right? You said before you came on the show you're a big wrestling fan. I really want to know who Marco Negri's favourite wrestler is. Wow, at the time I remember another funny story because uh, I was speaking about wrestling in the dressing room, you know, and uh, the um, the son of uh, the boy of Laudrup was also interesting, you know, in the, in the wrestling and everything. The day before, Brian Laudrup came to me and uh, he, t- he gave me a VHS, a video, you know. Mm-hmm. This is uh, from my son. It was some action of uh, wrestling, you know. Some wrestling? wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, well, the difference was that it was a boy and a player, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Uh, I used to love uh, Eddie Guerrero, oh, uh, Shawn Michaels, uh, or Kurt Angle, uh, The Undertaker. It was really, really, really amazing, you know. Was, uh, Grado, Grado and producer John do another podcast called uh, Wrestling Daft. They'll get you on that as well, Marco. <laughs> okay, no problem. I, 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 I can come with a mask. <laughs> hey, you, there's one thing you don't need is a mask, Marco. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you need to watch some of my matches, Marco. I'll send you, I'll give you a link. Right? Okay. okay. Watch me versus Drew McIntyre, you'll be blown away, big, and I'm telling you. <laughs> so Marco, do you keep in touch with any former teammates from Ibrox? Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, now, you know, with coronavirus, it's very tough uh, because uh, I've not been uh, to Scotland recently. But, uh, you know, I'm always happy when there is a charity evening, a, a event uh, or, a chi- or a charity legend match uh, or some NASA or some convention. You can meet the supporters, fans, uh, but also, you know, all the teammates like Michael Moles, uh, Richard Goff, uh, uh, Marvin Andrews, Nacho Novo, uh, Arthur Newman, George Alberts, uh, you know, really, really nice guy because... Uh, what is missing to me from football is uh, the dressing room, you know, mm-hmm. funny yeah. story, yeah. Uh, the, the guy that uh, you, you put uh, in the middle with some funny story. That's uh, yeah. the most important thing, you know, because uh, the action on the pitch uh, uh, is gone, uh, you know, yeah. but uh, the characters of everybody is still there. So it's like uh, to see each other, we see each other yeah. uh, maybe once a year, but it's like uh, we're still together. And the Rangers fans uh, used to say, you know, once a Rangers, always a Rangers, but it's not just some words. Uh, it's, it's the way, you know, the Rangers fans uh, live uh, Leave the club, uh, are leaving the club, are leaving uh, everything you know about yeah. uh, about Rangers. Definitely. What do you think of the team at the moment, Marco? What do you think of your chances this season? Very, very big. Uh, very, very big. I'm really, really confident. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, now we got a, a board uh, that uh, knows uh, that uh, you can build in football uh, step by step. Uh, we got. Uh, a really, really great uh, gaffer. Uh, you know, Steve Gerrard, I think, is the right man in the right place. Uh, he's a winner. And you are a winner when you win something, you know, and you won everything. And just if you are a winner, you can pass to players and to the, also to the supporters uh, the winning uh, way to think football, you know. He's really, really good uh, with the press. He's really, really good uh, to send a message uh, to players uh, through the press. Uh, and it's not so easy. It's very important right now in football. It is not so easy. Uh, of course, uh, uh, he's building uh, his, uh, his manager uh, career because maybe he's doing some uh, little uh, mistakes. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. their right things uh, is uh, that he is improving from mistakes, uh, and that is really, really important. The difference uh, between uh, the last season and this season, I think, are numbers. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, 
we got a zero goal uh, conceded. Yeah, so, he pulled a record from like 1912 or something like that, 15. And that makes the difference because you can build a team, you know, from uh, the attacking uh, way or you can build uh, in the other way, you know, just being solid and don't concede goal, uh, then something can happen, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I truly think if you want to win something, you must be solid on the back. Then uh, the individual, uh, the player uh, can win in the game uh, up front, uh, but you must be solid uh, on, the, on the back. And uh, we, look so, we look so far uh, in this way. Then up front, we got a lot of uh, really exciting players, you know, that can play in the space between the defender and the midfielder, like Haji, like Kent, like, uh, you know, uh, Haribo, and, uh, you know, something can happen also, especially at Ibrox. I truly think and hope that fans can be back to the stadium because, you know, supporters at Ibrox are... Uh, is the 12th man, so also the team needs the fans back. But I'm really, really confident. Then uh, I think a lot of Ranger supporters are happy today about the results. Of- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but- well, it's, funny, it's funny you say that, Marco, because usually there's another host in the show, but he's a Celtic fan and he suddenly came down with an illness and couldn't make it today. No, so- but, uh, a part, a part of, uh, you know, the result uh, is about money, you know, because yeah. going the Champions League means uh, millions. Millions, yeah. uh, very simple in football, it's very simple. Millions can buy good players, good players uh, are going to let you win uh, the games. Uh, so, you know, I know the Rangers' way to think about football is just be focused 100% in our team, but... Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we can take a disadvantage too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Marco, can I ask you one, one question? Right? At the moment, you're talking about your playing days when you said you made mistakes and stuff. At the moment, we've got a, we've got a striker, Alfredo Morelos. Right? He's obviously upsetting a few folk, not training properly. Recently, it was being reported. What would your advice be to him? <laughs> I don't think I'm the right person <laughs> to advise you, you know, but, no, but uh, you, you always must think that uh, uh, beside a player, there is also a person, you know, a human person. He's very young, uh, he is thinking, uh, he's playing uh, with the heart because he always played, uh, you know, with 100% of effort. Uh, you must always see the big picture, you know, not the end uh, of this picture, but the big picture. So it's being always effective, he scored a lot of goals. Uh, and uh, it's not easy when you see every day in newspaper that uh, you are going to be sell uh, uh, to training in the right way. Uh, because think about you, you know, uh, football is a special uh, job, uh, but in every job, uh, you know, if you are not sure that uh, your, uh, uh, your career uh, is in, uh, in uh, a proper direction, you, you know you are focused 100%. But mm-hmm. uh, I think, uh, you know, like everybody is saying, uh, the badge on the top in front is bigger of any name on the back. Uh, yes. And uh, I think uh, that uh, if uh, Morello can stay, I don't know, maybe until January, I don't know, it will be a big, big boots. But uh, also in Italy, you say that uh, is is better to leave each other that uh, ever met each other in life. You know, yeah. so right. if right. something if something is going to end, uh, you know, it's good that everybody's got something back. Uh, you know, and maybe you don't know. It's very young Morello. He can come back. You know, when uh, maybe yeah. in a few years. All right. As well, do you know what, Marco? This has been one of my favourite interviews. If, if only I could tell 12 year old me that I'd be talking to Marco Negri about Eddie Guerrero, man. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. I, honest, honestly, I'd never believe it. But before you go, each. You have, you, have, uh, you have to see me in action with my boy. 
<laughs> really? Hey, Marco, don't try this at home. Oh, no, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Brilliant. Honestly, it's been an absolute great interview. Probably the Amazing. highlight of doing this podcast so far. What do you think, Bob? It's been, like Grado says, like, if I could look back and say I'd been interviewing Marco Negri when I'm older, man. It's brilliant, mate. Honestly, thanks for giving up your time. I really appreciate it. But before, before you go, every week um, we, we do this podcast, Marco, and uh, we put our guests' football knowledge to the test with a 90-second quiz. Would you butt for doing that? Yeah. Right? So I'm going to tell you what some of the scores recently. Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley, they're joined at the top leaderboard with 14. Kenny Duker and Kevin Harper just behind in 13. Barry Ferguson um, is third on 12. And other scores are Ian Murray's on seven, Jim Leishman on five, Big Mac Sue Pat Line is on three, and holding everybody up at the bottom of the table is Falkert's David McCracken. He only got one question right. So 90 seconds, Marco, and you can't pass. You must give an answer. Are you ready for this? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, just got, I've just looked at the second question, man. I'm peeing myself. So, Bob, I'm thinking maybe you're better off asking. You, you're probably better off asking the quiz because I'm going to work right. with that second question. Right, okay. Right, I need to block you at the new grade. I can't look at you and ask us. Right, so 90 seconds on the clock, John. Yep. You ready, Marco? Yeah. Right. Must be. <laughs> what English club has Lyndon Dykes joined? English club. I see. Who won the Highland League last year? <laughs> I don't know. John, that's brutal, Anything. man. Right. What club did you go out on loan from Udinese to? Uh, Novara. What teams played in the Champions League final? Uh, Paris Saint-Germain versus Bayern Mon Monaco. Yeah. Who is the new Barcelona manager? Koeman. Mark Kerr manages which Scottish club? Who did you score five goals against at Ibrox? Dundee United. Which Italian international played for Dundee in 2003? Uh, De Marchi and Biglio? No, Ravanelli, Ravanelli, Ravanelli. What is the name of Harps Stadium? Uh, Middleton, Middleton, no. <laughs> what English team has Thiago Silva just signed for? I don't know. Which Scottish Premiership club has an eagle on its badge? Time! Oh, you, you can still answer that, Marco, if you want. Still add Marco asked very it. bad, uh, very bad. Uh, sorry. No, no. Sorry about it. I must read uh, some newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I got to buy some uh, newspaper. <laughs> oh, right, we've got to You've done better than quite a lot of folk do. Aye, you have, Marco, you have. You have. Um, we'll, go, we'll go through the wrong answers. Um, the English club that London Dykes signed for is QPR. Obviously, you know him from, from his time at Livingston, Marco. Okay. Um, uh, Brora Rangers won the Highland League this year. Can you believe you never I, got that, Marco? I can't believe you that. I, I didn't even know that, Marco. Uh, Mark Kerr is the manager of Air United in Scotland. Uh, Hart Stadium's called Tyne Castle, though I did like the uh, middle town. Ah, Tyne Castle, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, you've been there. <laughs> Four goals there. Uh, the English team Thiago Silva has just signed for is Chelsea. Chelsea. And the Scottish club with an eagle on its badge is Inverness Caledonian. Thistle. Okay. But it was, bit, you're not bottom of the league by a long shot. You beat several people on the leaderboard. You've got five, Marco. Five, okay. That's okay, my number. <laughs> well played, I, just, well played. I just had you a delivery five, there. Kato. Did he get five? <laughs> just, five. <laughs> the delivery driver came and he's like, I need to take a picture of the package. I was like, hurry up, mate. I've got fucking Marco Negri on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> he's Marco, hilarious. thanks so much for joining us, mate. Really, really appreciate it. No, oh, my pleasure. Really, my pleasure. All the best for the rest of the season and uh, a big, big ciao to all the Rangers supporters. Really. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Marco. You're all right. Thank you. Audio Frontier.